Hi. We're from um, the Biological Sciences Department um, at City Tech. And I'm Professor Voza with the blue gloves. And I'm <laughs> Professor Brugler. With the other blue gloves. <laughs> so today we're going to dissect um, the earthworm. What are earthworms? Earthworms are annelids or segmented worms. And we can actually see that on a fresh worm here. Um, oops. So they have segments. I'm not sure you can see very well. We'll see it even better on the preserved one, but there are little rings that you can see. And as if you put those rings together to make the worm. How do we call those rings, those segments? Somites. So what, where do earthworm live? In soil. And they feed on soil as well, right? What's their importance? That's a really good question, Professor <laughs> <laughs> So they really transform organic matter, like dead leaves, and as they are going to poop that, they are going to enrich the soil with minerals that the plants will use. So they're really good to have, and if you gar you're doing some gardening and you see earthworms, don't be spooked. Be careful. Don't hurt them. Cherish them. They're really good for your plants. Um, they also allow air in the soil by making those little holes everywhere and they're really good to have. They're also um, harmless. They're not even slimy if you handle them. They're pretty neat. This one went on its ventral side so we can see it's, it has a lighter color and it's very difficult to determine where's the head and where's the tail when they start moving. So you're saying an earthworm has a head? Yes. So where are the eyeballs if it has a head? Do you need eyes on the ground? Oh, I guess we don't. It would really be bothersome. <laughs> so they gave up on that. <laughs> <laughs> and earthworms have what type of symmetry, Dr. Brugger? Hmm, maybe asymmetry, no symmetry at all? No, that seems pretty regular to me. Oh, so... you're right, you're right. I'm giving you an F. <laughs> well, let's see. There's three types. So maybe it's radial, like our cnidarians, like our jellyfish. Nope. No? Again? Ugh. They are. If they can't be radial, they have to be. Oh, bilateral. Oh, yeah, Bil they bilateral. It's always hard to see in worms <laughs> um, because they just look like a tube. Yes. And that's their body plan. Yeah. A tube within a tube. A tube. Wow. The inner tube being the digestive tract. Um, do they have a body cavity? Hmm, let's see. I believe they do. It's one of the first groups that we see in the tree life that has a coelom, a true body cavity. Oh, so cool. They're a little more evolved than the flatworms then. Yes. And that's why they're round, right? Um, <laughs> I believe that's because of their hydrostatic skeleton. Right? They fill yeah. the coelom with fluid to create that pressure called the hydrostatic skeleton. Wow, that's great. Um... What else do they, what do they make first? Their mouth or their anus? Because they do have those structures, mouth and anus. Ah, so. <laughs> Oops. Slight technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a mouth and an anus, right? Yes. And what do they make first? Let's see, these are protostomes. So proto so first. First. Um, and stome mouth. Uh, yes. They make their mouth, mouth first. first. Ah. Okay, so that's not like us. Nope. We're what deuterostomes. Yes, we deuterostomes. Make the mouth second. Indeed. Okay. So, so Professor Voza, I've been noticing on this worm, particularly in this living worm. This isn't actually a dead one. This is a, li a live one yeah, from Professor Voza's garden. Yeah, it's not Boza's moving garden. much anymore. From it is a little cold here in the room, <laughs> but I noticed this band-aid-like structure uh, here on the worm. A little bit lighter color wraps around the body. What yeah. is that thing? That is called the. Clitellum. Oh. Maybe I pronounce it wrong or clitellum. Oh. Um, and that's like a larger ring on them. Yeah. So I, the ma lab manual was saying there's two functions uh, of the clitellum. What are those things? Um, one is to make mucus mm. to wrap up sperm cells because sperm cells can dry out quickly. So it's convenient to have them wrap in mucus so they don't die from drying out. And the second function is to make a cocoon so oh. that uh, you can protect the offspring. 
So yeah. uh, earthworms are hermaphroditic, which means they have both male and female uh, sex organs, but they prefer to pass the sperm onto another individual. And so, uh, so they, they essentially get side by side, that, that uh, clitel makes mucus, they transfer the sperm, then they have a cocoon. Oh, check out this thing. He's, I'm glad it's moving. Oh, wow, finally, we got some movement of this guy. And also, the clitellum is useful for us because it's closer to the head or the tail? Closer to the head end. Closer to the head. So now we know this part is the head and it's moving forward right now, trying to escape from us. Indeed. So, Professor Boza, if you were to rub your fingers along the length of the earthworm, would it be smooth or do you feel any bristles or setae? Uh, it feels a bit rough. Hmm. So, are these polychaetes, many setae, or oligochaetes, few setae? I can't see them. I can feel them. So, I would say they have few. Ah, few. So, this is indeed a oligochaete, probably the most well-known oligochaete, because it only has two pairs of setae, little bristles, per segment. Oh, and what do they use that for? Huh, it looks like he's using it for movement. Oh, to grab to the paper? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, but they don't live on paper. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to get through the soil. Right, to dig themselves. Mm. And is that why I've seen birds trying to pull them out and birds had trouble and I just thought they were weak birds. Ah, me too. <laughs> it's not the case? No, it's the actually those bristles holding the worm in the soil. So it makes it really difficult to pull them out. Wow. That's cool. Oh. That is um, very cool. And, and so, Professor Vosa, you said this is a segmented worm. And so each segment has a repetition of, of one or more body parts. What body part is repeated in about 98% of the segments? What body parts? Yeah. What internal organ is repeated? Um, I know they have those kidney-like mm. organs called nephridia. They have all along in pairs because they have bilateral symmetry. Yes. Um, so what's and the function of a, a, of a rudimentary kidney called a nephridium? To filter their blood. Ah. Yeah, and this is not um, a very translucent worm, but sometimes we can see the blood vessels with blood flowing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's in the winter, so this one does not look too um, warm and happy. Um, but yeah, if you get a chance to have a, a fresh earthworm, check out its blood vessels just by looking at it. You can see it under the skin. And they actually use their skin to breathe. Oh, they do? They don't have a lung or gills? Nope. nope. What? <laughs> They're pretty amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. And so I heard this crazy fact about earthworms that they have five pairs of hearts. Ten what? hearts. Ten for more, hearts? For more love. Ooh, it's for more love. <laughs> That's fantastic. I was thinking maybe because it's so uh, uh, um, hmm, uh, active. No, just kidding. The thing hasn't moved once <laughs> since we put it on the video. Yeah, actually, yeah. they have repetitions. And then we see after that animals have just fused those repeated parts. And then we start seeing the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, which is not obvious here. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we open them, we do start seeing, oh, maybe that could be the equivalent of a thoracic area, a chest area, and so on. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying on one end of the worm is a mouth and the other end is the anus. So it does have a complete digestive tract? Yep. Yep. Okay. And Wonderful. that's why tube within a tube. Yep. Tube within a tube. All right. We're going to move on to the, the uh, dissection. dissection next. All right. All right, so here we have our preserved worm and you see the color is very different. It's been um, dead for a while and preserved so it wouldn't decompose. And this is a much bigger worm, so it's really uh, nice for a dissection. And also we see the clitellum very well. It's that very white structure here and the segments are also very obvious. So we have to open this worm to see the internal organs and for that we need to pin it and we have a little protrusion on this side here good. and that's the prostomium it's like a little lip that they have above their mouth so we can pin them right there Oops. Oh. and then on the other side so that the worm doesn't move, it stays straight when we cut. I thought you said it was dead. Why would it move? Because it's a bit rubbery and it doesn't stay in place. It won't move anymore now. It's pinned. And I'm gonna try an incision. 
without too much damage, starting from a little below the clitellum here and going up. So this worm has been squished. <laughs> it's gonna, hopefully I'll be right in the middle when I cut. Oh, using the old scissors. I like the scissors. You know, I like to hand out something that we call the cat food award, and that is given to any uh, group of lab students that uses scissors to make the incision Why? and turns the internal organs into mush. That's I not true. Cat food. That's not true. This is the first if time you I've ever, stay. ever seen an earthworm dissected with scissors. <laughs> Dr. Brugler? <laughs> I always do it with scissors because you you have to keep keep the tip of your scissors right below the skin and ah, going upwards. So, so that's the secret. Yeah. Ooh, there's some juice coming out. And I'm going really sideways right now. And I don't want to block the view. You're doing a great job. So a very shallow cut, trying not to Destroy everything yeah. and make cat food. Make cat food. Dr. Brugler's favorite. <laughs> Maybe he's right. Maybe everything will be cat food in the end. We'll see. We might have to re record this. But don't worry, there'll be a blooper reel, <laughs> and we'll include this. <laughs> don't make me laugh, otherwise, I can't cut. So what sort of thing should we see inside of here? All right. Incision completed. So now let's reveal. We're gonna pin our worm. Ooh. These pins are huge. So Professor Boza, the first thing that stands out are all of these uh, white structures? Uh, well, yes, that was, yeah, yes, the white structures. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say those, uh, those partitions, that the ah. skin, uh, skin partitions. Uh, yeah, that were uh, separating the segments. Oh, that's what those are, the septa? And, yeah, uh, like the fungi, we use the same oh, word, septa. Septa, they separate. separate. Good, good, good. <laughs> So is that cat food? No, you've done a fantastic job. I will now ask all of my students to <laughs> use scissors rather than the scalpel. Because the scalpel is hard to determine how much strength you should put, and then you end up cutting organs in half. Yep. So I like my to little scissors. To all of my previous students that are watching this <laughs> dissection, I apologize. I steered you incorrectly. That is not true. Maybe now they're surgeons. Maybe. I can only hope. <laughs> all right. Wow, look at all this good stuff. So what are those white structures that are so obvious? I believe the larger of the white structures, and if you could please Voza, uh, put your probe on it so everybody can see what we're talking yes. about here. Yes, I believe those are the seminal either vesicles or receptacles. Right, they have both. What is the word seminal referring to? I think sperm, maybe? Like semen. Oh, yes. Seminal semen. And since these are hermaphrodites, they produce sperm cells, mm. but when they mate, they receive sperm cells. Ah. So they have seminal vesicles to make it mm -hmm. and seminal, seminal receptacle to receive the sperm cells from another worm when they mate. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So... What else do we see here? Oh, wow. So just posterior towards the, uh, the, the anal opening uh, from the seminal receptacles. I think that is the, if I go into the garden, I can get some crops, right? Or wait, no, that's in a field. The crop. <laughs> is that the crop? Is that... I think that's the crop. Oh, but that's not a plant. <laughs> <laughs> that joke went horribly awry. <laughs> Horrible. Yes, that's the crop. So that's part of that's, their digestive yes, tract. Yes, their digestive tract. Right. That's where they store food. Okay. So all the soil that they're eating. They store it in they there. They store it in the crop. Okay. So it's different than a stomach. Yeah. Oh, well, no, it's actually similar. Oh. I mean, there's really no digesting going on. Okay. In the stomach, we start Storage. digesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then here is oh. the... 
So the g g g g g gizzard. <laughs> the gizzard. I like gizzards. Yeah. The ah. chicken gizzard. Ah. Mm, it's very muscular. It's so ah. chewy. Yuck. I wouldn't try it on the earthworm though. It's too small. <laughs> yeah. So what's the function of the, the gizzard? Gizzards are there to crush ah. food because so they don't have they don't chew. They don't have teeth and stuff like that to chew. So, so there's so. not teeth in the gizzard. So how's it chewing? Um, because it's a muscle, so it oh. contracts and, and squeezes and everything. Oh. And then if there are little rocks, rocks. they're going to help crush everything. That's awesome. Yeah. So cool. So is that it for the digestive system? Um, I think there's a long tube that runs the length of the body. And oh, it's, it's I opened it. Bit. Yep. And it's oozing some dark stuff what that I'm putting that back in place. Food? What would that be? Is that coming from the intestine? It or? is the intestines, mm. absolutely. So I, I did... So is that the soil? Yeah, that I it's guess. filtering? Yep. Ah, so mm. that's the food. Mm. So the tube within a tube is the intestines. You got Yummy. it. Yummy. <laughs> well, and you can see those septa really well uh, right Here, there. Absolutely. Yeah. Very nice. Hmm, now let's go back upwards towards the oral part. Yeah. So what do we see? Those black little structures. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can see them. It's yeah, very... those black structures. Hmm. They look like little bridges. Ah. Like here. I see one, two, three, four, maybe. Okay. So earlier you'd mentioned they have five pairs of hearts. Hearts. That's the love. Ah. So these are all their hearts. Wow. Well, they call them arches too. Mm -hmm. And it's dark because it was filled with blood. That's ah. now. Yeah. Makes sense. Hmm. Okay. So we see the repetition. Same, same, same. Um, not uh, that obvious with the vesicles, no. yeah. But that would be the equivalent of their thoracic area. Yes. If if it was obvious from the outside, and then we would then get the abdomen mm -hmm. with the intestine, and the head would be here. But there's not much more than a mouth. <laughs> there you go, a mouth, a primitive brain, and I put brain in quotes. Yeah. Uh, it's just a concentration of nervous tissue. No eyeballs. Nope. You don't need no. that on the ground. And uh, let me ask you, so where's the throat or the pharynx? Where would I find that? Would that be immediately behind the mouth? The yes. Tube? Okay. It would okay. be somewhere here. Should I open more? Nah, I don't think we're okay. going to see much. Yeah, we're not yeah. Gonna see very it's much. a bit mushy. And do you think, so you mentioned earlier that the only organ that's repeated in every segment are the nephridia, these primitive kidneys. Can we see those anywhere? Or are those, are those kind of just like mush? I have no idea. Yeah, they're just mushy. I've never so, been uh, lucky enough to observe <laughs> any. <laughs> so all, all of this stuff is just mushed up nephridia. So nephridia are just little microtubes and... They filter their blood. There you go. It's the You're equivalent not, of our kidneys. You're not going to see too yeah, much. Yeah, no. I'm trying to pull something out. <laughs> so in tor terms of order, so we've got the crop comes first, and that's to store the food. Right. And then the gizzard grinds. So yes. the G in gizzard goes with the G in grind. And then that heads on to the intestines for the whole length of the body. And then the anus. Awesome. Awesome. All right. That was a fantastic dissection. I think we covered everything. Absolutely. Yeah.